Hello. Hey, uh, Book of Mormon Reader has asked us to, to share, to participate with her in some video responses and share some of our favorite scriptures out of the Book of Mormon. And uh, I can't find my regular Book of Mormon, so I'm using this wonderful Book of Mormon that my daughter Katie has so lovingly shared with me a couple of years ago for Christmas. And she bore her testimony to me and wrote her uh, testimony. <laughs> I treasure this Book of Mormon from my daughter. <laughs> it's a very nice gift. I also have to apologize to you, Book of Mormon reader. Um, I, I, I've been pondering this now for a few days since I found your invitation. There is so there is so much that is profound in the Book of Mormon. Um, I don't know if I have a specific favorite part, so I, I think what I'd love to do for my video response is to, to read what I consider to be one of the most powerful, best parts of the Book of Mormon, and then I want to share with you what I consider to be one of the greatest expositions on this aspect of the Book of Mormon. I want to discuss the faith discussion in Alma 32, and I want to share with you Hugh Nibley's teachings that he gave to an honors class at BYU way back in 1986 or 87, I believe, and his expounding on Alma 32. I won't go through the, I won't cover the entire chapter, but so I apologize if I end up making too many videos as a video response. Uh, I, I, I don't mean to overdo it, I really don't, and I don't mean to uh, goof up your project. I know you wanted basically a, a simple response about which is my favorite scripture. I don't have any one specific favorite scripture. I have hundreds of them. I mean, I, I've already produced well over a hundred videos on the Book of Mormon in various aspects of the Book of Mormon that I do find deeply moving and profound and interesting. But I haven't covered Alma 32 yet, and so I thought, you know, to honor you and your request, this wonderful idea that I, I really think is neat, uh, I, I want to share with you Alma 32 and Hugh Nibley's explanation of Alma 32. So this may be five or six videos. I apologize for goofing up your project. Please, please forgive me, and uh, you know me. I'm long-winded. I get going, and I can't stop. But uh, Alma 32, let me start with... Uh, I'm going to read the part in Alma. He's, he's talking to the Zoramites who were outcast. And they were outcast from their own synagogues and their own places of worship. The ones they themselves built because they didn't have the right clothes. <laughs> you know, there's a lesson in that for us today, isn't there? You know, you got to dress for success. So, Anyway, he says, verse 21. Well, behold, the 20... Now of these things you must judge. Uh, behold, I say unto you that it's on the one hand, even as it is on the other, it shall be unto every man according to his work. Okay, verse 21. Let me, uh, I'm sitting here in my comfortable library. I'm showing you the other side of my library. I showed you the one side over there, and now I'm showing you this one over here. All of this is my LDS and Bible section, and that over there was my Bible and Dead Sea Scroll and Zohar section. Okay, verse 21. Now, as I said concerning faith, faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if you have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are true. And 22. Now, behold, I say unto you, and I would, get, I would that you would remember that God is merciful unto all who believe in his name, on his name. All who believe on his name. The emphasis of the name in Alma 32 is a spectacular Zoharic Jewish principle. I just wanted to emphasize that. This is a beautiful touch here. Very, very interesting when you begin studying the Zohar like I've been doing for the last several years in the Kabbalah. Believe on his name. Therefore he desireth in the first place that you should believe, yea, even on his word. So we have name and word here. And now he imparteth his word by angels unto men. Yea, not only men, but women also. You know, let's get serious. <laughs> the 
church have been accused of being anti-feminism, of, of making women secondary citizens and all that bunk. I don't hear very many LDS women complaining about their stations in this church. It is a blessing to belong to the church. There's no question. You just start asking a lot of Mormon women. Yes, of course, there are some who are disgruntled. But overall, there is no sexism here. God imparteth his word unto all who believe on his name and in his word, men and women. Alma is explicit here. Very interesting. And also little children. Talk about all-inclusive. This is impressive here. They do have the words given unto them many times, which confound the wise and the learned. And now, my beloved brethren, I'm on verse 24, And now, my beloved brethren, as ye have desired to know of me what ye shall do, because ye are afflicted and cast out. See, the Zoramites came to Alma and they asked, What are we going to do, man? We have been booted out of the city. We, we, we built this joint, and we built these buildings, and now we can't even participate in them. He says, well, okay, for those of you who are cast out. Now, I do not desire that you should suppose that I mean to judge you only according to that which is true, for I do not mean that ye all of you have been compelled to humble yourselves, for I verily believe that there are some among you who would humble themselves, let them be in whatsoever circumstances they might. It's one thing to be compelled to be humble. It's another thing to be humble automatically anyway. That's what he's trying to discuss with them. Because of the pride of the other faction of Zoramites, who threw out this more poor, less influential, and affluent part of their own society, they chucked them out. Well, now, as I said concerning faith, verse 26 now, now, as I said concerning faith, that it was not a perfect knowledge, even so it is with my words. You cannot know of the surety of my words at first unto perfection any more than faith is a perfect knowledge. But, behold, if you will awake and arouse your faculties, even to an experiment upon my words, and exercise a particle of faith, Yea, even if you can do no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you. Why not? What do you got to lose? Let the desire work in you. Yet, even until you believe in a manner that you can have place for a portion of my words. That you can give place for a portion of my words. He's not saying completely believe me. Test. Haven't I advocated that in my videos? When I propose a proposition on some religious idea or something, I tell you, don't believe in what I'm telling you. Do it yourself. Test it. Go get the books I'm reading to you and check it out. Has it not increased your appreciation? Not only of the subjects I'm picking, but the subjects in general, as well as the biblical scholars, the Book of Mormon scholars, and so on and so forth? You bet it has. Alma's telling the Zoramites the same thing. I wonder if that's where I subconsciously got this attitude, other than the fact that I've been criticized for misusing and abusing sources. Well, verse 28. Now we will compare the word unto a seed. Now if you give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it is a true seed or a good seed, if you don't cast it out by your unbelief, you got to give it a chance here, a tomato does not grow up overnight and turn red the next day. Sorry, that's not how it works. <laughs> Don't cast it out. Don't resist the spirit of your of the Lord. Don't cast it out because of your unbelief. Behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, you will begin to say within yourselves, well, it, it must be that it's a good seed. I'm feeling something. Something's happening with this. Okay. Or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul, and it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. It beginneth to be delicious to me. I love that. The word of God, and taking upon ourselves the name, begins to be delicious. I love that. That is good. Joseph Smith said, this doctrine tastes good. Brigham Young expounded on that. Now the backyard professor is agreeing with what the Book of Mormon says. I promise, this is the effect. There's no question. Anyway, behold, uh, verse 29 now. 
Now behold, would not this increase your faith? If something begins to happen, 